I will not cozy up to tyrants and dictators like Kim Jong Un, who are rooting for Trump. They are rooting. She then reiterated, they are rooting for Trump. They are rooting yeah. for Trump yeah. because they know he is easy to manipulate with flattery and favors. Mm -hmm. They know Trump won't hold autocrats accountable because he wants to be an autocrat. Yeah. I have to say that little piece of analysis is something that almost never gets articulated Correct. that way. Instead, it gets described as something that's unbecoming, uh, right. or un-American seeming, or puzzling. Yeah. Right. It is right. to have right. her spell it out. Is because he wants to be an autocrat. Then she says the, mar the line that you, you singled out, Lawrence. As president, I will never waver in defense of America's security and ideals because in the enduring struggle between democracy and tyranny, I know where I stand. Mm -hmm. I know where I stand and where the United States of America belongs. Saying we as Americans have inherited a global responsibility to be on the side of democracy and against tyranny. And we have been taken out of that position by this yes. former president yes. who is trying to put us back on the side of autocrats. I will never do that. And I will put us back where we belong as Americans. And if that's where you, any American in the sound of my voice, believes we ought to be, then you're with me. And, and that's just that's she why pushed. Leon Panetta said, yeah. we have no choice. Yeah. He laid that out. And just to draw a contrast tonight, what was Donald Trump doing? He was social media posting, where's Hunter? And no, Tim Walsh wasn't coach. He was assistant coach. That's what he okay? well, And that's funny, we got him, it's buddy. not. Yeah. Right? It's devastating when yeah. you look at that. So yeah. people would say, was this speech perfect? Look at who she's running against, right? Darkness and fear, optimism and light. And that's what she offered tonight. Not just optimism and light, but real policy and vision for the country. She, I really loved, just on that point that you just made, Rachel, I really love the line about the greatest privilege being an American. Mm -hmm. Because I think there's something really subtle and uh, nuanced and smart about that. It is full-throatedly patriotic. I, I believe that 100%. But it also comes with, like, the notion of, you know, the people have attacked this sort of liberal notion of privilege. But, like, it is a great privilege to be an American. It's the greatest privilege. We, we all won the natural lottery. People come from across the earth to be here. And to put it in those terms is at once patriotic and also progressive in the way because it'll, it, it forces you to recognize the fact that we all who have been born here have been handed this thing that we have something to do with. And I loved, loved, loved that. To part. uphold the awesome responsibility that comes with the greatest privilege on earth, yes. the privilege and pride of being an American. I, I mean, at a strategic level, I think that she soared into the this role where a lot of people watching get that she's already doing all these things mm -hmm. and that at a national security level she's the safe bet she honors our alliances and and it and it, it really is there's some serendipity right that she had this large role that she is the one who went over and met with Zelensky that she is the one that even the Wall Street Journal's reporting was instrumental in this hostage release and, and prisoner swap um, but it, it, it's sort of to Lawrence's point she was already ready to do the job she told the whole country she's doing it I, I think the other strategic piece that she sort of closed the door on is pushing Trump way out of the mainstream. Mm -hmm. And Kinzinger helped, and Panetta helped, and that stage full of gorgeous veterans, Gallego. Gallego. Yeah. I mean, I really keep going back. Because I have to say, we kind of looked at the rundown, and we were like, hmm, how do these pieces fit together? Well, what? what are they? And you look at it after her speech, and they were pushing him out of the mainstream of U.S. foreign policy, the mainstream of any past commander-in-chief that has ever held that office in the history of the country, not just a Republican that's out of the mainstream, but any person who's ever had the privilege of being the commander in chief. He's so far out of the mainstream of his own. And then Kinsinger comes in and pushes him way out of the mainstream of his own party. And so the only patriotic thing to do is to vote for Kamala Harris. Yeah. But well, Nicole, Rachel, you the just. You've been reading, the, the language you've been reading is so beautifully simple. Mm -hmm. There's not a high school kid in America who wouldn't yeah. understand every single thing she said. And I've never heard a Democratic speech in this setting that is as simple as that. There's always something that gets a little bit jargony, a little bit into, you got to know two more things about the federal government to understand that sentence. It's yeah. the clarity of it and then her delivery of it just absolutely flawless, making, making it even more clear. She said repeatedly, let me be clear. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, she was clear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? yeah. and, and when you think about Donald Trump, who gets questions by reporters and never answers the questions <laughs> and has never been clear about a single issue ever, except his desire to raise taxes on everyone through tariffs, th that guy who's never clear. Uh, there she was being flawlessly clear all the way through on every policy that she was describing. But the like, clearest thing was her assignment. 
because she ends by telling America, let's get out there and fight for it. Yeah. And, and what you said, Nicole, that, you know, we're really, we know that she's already doing all this. What we needed in these four days was the reminder that she is, because people often forget what she's doing. Yeah. Right? People don't think about the VP. So over these last four days, we're reminded all the places she's been, all the things she's done. And, and people will say, we want this and more. And they're saying, what in the world is Donald Trump doing? Because he hasn't articulated any clear mission or message. Yeah, and Chris, thank you for... I'll do my second Sorry. sports analogy in my, <laughs> in my entire career at this desk. I think we're seeing the backup quarterback becoming the starting quarterback. Yes, yes. And when, the, when you're the backup quarterback and you run three plays a game, or we don't really exactly. know what you can do, but you're an NFL quarterback, yeah. right? So maybe, and now here she is. She's the starting quarterback. That's the way yeah. she can play. Chris, I want to thank you for also for the the reminder about what the parallel speech was at the I RNC. Mean, I mean, I had I actually I had blocked it out, but he did go on like for Trump. ninety whatever minutes just talking about like Hannibal Lecter and sharks or what. I mean, it wasn't sharks that night, but just the random riffing on stuff that popped into his mind in the moment while people drifted out of the room. I mean, contrast that with what we just saw. But that's what Jacob said, right? I was at the RNC, and when Jacob was saying this was a totally different ending, I was thinking, what is he talking about? There was a lot of celebration, but not at the end. Because <laughs> no. at the end of the RNC, <laughs> like... people had let, they were exhausted, and those last 15 minutes, people were kind of backing up, like, is he going to notice I'm leaving? Yes. So when those balloons <laughs> yes. came down, it was like people were like, to get I'm out of here. Yes. The celebration was in the Hulk Hogan hour, not in the Donald Trump hour. Well,